What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use timers and clocks with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at timers and clocks. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Alright, it is Monday morning here in Vegas, very windy out, I don't know if you can hear the wind in the background, but it is howling. And today, we're going to look at using timers and clocks, and here you see I've, I've built a little clock. But more importantly, we're going to look at timers. And so there's so many times where you need to wait a certain amount of time before you do something in your program, like wait 10 seconds and then run this function, wait 10 seconds and then open this window, you know, wait four seconds, wait a second, wait whatever you want. How do you do that with Kinter? And it's actually very, very easy. There's a function that works sort of by default with all of the widgets called dot after. And dot after does just what it sounds. It waits after a certain amount of time and then it does something. And that's what we're going to look at mainly in this video and we're going to use that to build this clock and, and do some other things. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and I've got some starter code and I named it clock.py and it's just our basic Kinter starter code that we always use. And you see we have our root window, 600 by 400 and our main loop. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So let's start off by creating a label. I'm going to call it my underscore label as we often do. And that's a label and we want to put it in root and we want the text to equal uh, nothing right now. And let's go ahead and my label dot pack this to the screen and give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down a little bit. So let's look at updating this after a certain amount of time. We can use the dot after function to do that. And to do that, we just call our, our variable, whatever we named it, and then just go dot after. And this is a function and it takes a couple of parameters. The first one is how long you wanna wait. And this is in milliseconds. So a thousand milliseconds equals one second. So if you wanted to wait five seconds, that would be 5,000 milliseconds. So you can just pass that in there. And then you can also then after that tell it what you want this to do. So let's go, uh, let's create a function, let's just call it update, right? So now we can create that function and let's go define update and let's just then my underscore label dot config and change the text to new text, right? So actually we can start out, we could put this as old text as if we want just to see the difference. And then that's all there is to this. So this will wait five seconds and then run this function. And this function just updates the text. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's head over to our terminal and run python clock.py. And you see old text, two, three, four, five, boom, changes to new text, right? And that's really all there is to it. So that's really, really useful, right? So if we wanna run this again, let me be a little quicker. And 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, boom, change to new text. So roughly five seconds, well, exactly five seconds, right? So that's really cool, right? So you can use this all the time. So that's really, really cool. So now let's build a clock, right? So you saw at the beginning of the video, I created that little clock. Let's do that now. So we need to import something called time. So let's import time. And time just comes with Python. It's just a, a Python uh, universal thing and we can access different things that have to deal with time. So let's create a new function. Let's call it define, uh, let's just call it clock. And now let's create some variables. Let's create hour, uh, minute, and second for now. And let's come down here. Let's change this to nothing. Let's just go ahead and use this label. And let me comment this out. So to, to use time, we can use something called STRF time, and that will allow us to grab different aspects of time. So if we want to grab the current hour, the current minute, the current second, we can do that using STRF time. So to do that, we call time, which is what we imported here, and then we can just call STRF time. And this is a function, and what do we want to look up in STRF time? We want to grab the hour, so to do that, we can grab H. And this is just the function. And we'll look at what this is in just a second. So I'm gonna copy this a couple of times. And so for minute, it is M. 
So the H stands for hour, the M stands for minute, and you can guess capital S stands for second. And these are all capital. Uh, this is case sensitive, lowercase means different things, and we'll look at all these in just a second. So now we've got our hour, minute, and second, and we can update our label here. So let's go, let's go my underscore label dot config. And we want the text to equal, let's go hour, and we can concatenate this. And then let's put a colon, concatenate again, and then call minute, and again concatenate. And then finally, oh, misspelled minute, M-I-N-U-T-E. And then finally, let's call second, All right? And let's play around with this uh, label. Let's make this font different. So let's go font equals, and let's call this Helvetica and give it a size of 48. And let's give this a foreground color of green and a background color of black. And okay, so now we just wanna run this function when the program runs. So let's just come down here and call the function, right? So let's go ahead and save this and run it and see what this looks like. And you can see we've got this sort of readout. It looks 820 and 40 seconds. It's 820 in the morning on uh, Monday here. And that's pretty cool. Now, this just shows the current time or whatever, right? It, it's not updating. So how do we get it to update? Well, we can use that dot after function we just looked at, right? So we can come down here, underneath here, we can go my underscore label dot after. And we want this to happen every second, let's say. And what do we wanna do? Let's just call the clock function. Now, normally when you call a function, you call it like this, but in, in this instance, and a lot of times in Kinter, we just call the name of it and it will run. So what happens here is this function will run when we run the program down here, right? It will show the current time. And then this will run and say, wait a second, and then rerun this again. So this whole function will get run again, in which time the current time, which will be a second later, will put up, will output onto the screen. A second later, this will run again, which makes this whole function run again which will outdate the next second, et cetera. So now we can save this and let's run this again. And you can see now, boom, it's updating. Very cool, right? 22, 20, or four, five, six. And so that's very cool. So what is this STRF time? So let's look at this real quick. Let's copy this and let's head over to our web browser and let's just go to Google and we can search time.strf time and pull up the docs here. And we could scroll down, or I'm just gonna search in this thing. And here we have a, a list of all of these different things. And you can see we did H and M and S. Now H is a 24 hour clock. So this is like military time. So at two o'clock this afternoon, it will say 14 o'clock. And you may not want that. You may want 12 hour time, in which case you would use the I. So we can come back over here to our code and change this from H to I, and it won't make any difference in our current code, but uh, afternoon, it will look different, so that's cool. What else can we do? We can find the full weekday name. So here's this, let's, let's do that real quick. Let's see what day of the week it is for our clock. So let's call this day equals, and I'm just gonna copy this whole thing. And what was it again? capital A, so we can change that. And let's come down here and let's create a second label. So let's go my underscore label two equals a label and it's in root and the text equals nothing. And let's go my underscore label two and let's pack this on the screen, give it a pad Y of 10 to push it down a little bit. And maybe we want to, uh, change the font a little bit to, let's say, Vetica, and let's say size 14 or so. And then up here, we can, my underscore label two dot config, and let's give the text equals here, day. So if we save this, let's run it. Now it says Monday, so that's cool, right? What else can we do? Let's look through here. We can find, let's see, the AM or PM. If we wanna know, hey, is it morning or afternoon? We can do lowercase p, so let's do that real quick. 
So let's call this AM slash PM. And I'm just going to copy all of this again. And this was lowercase p. So we can add this. Let's add this to the clock part. So uh, let's concatenate again and give it a space and then concatenate again and put AM PM. Save this and let's run this guy. So, okay, now it says AM next to it. That's cool, right? What else can we do? Monday, we got that. Um, let's look here. We can see time zone, right? So I'm in Las Vegas, which is Pacific Standard Time, I think. So we could, we could find out for sure by calling Z. So let's do that real quick. Let's go time zone equals. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste. And that was capital Z. And let's put this guy underneath. So in our label two, we'll put that and let's concatenate space and concatenate again. Okay, so save this and run it. And yep, Pacific Daylight Time, Monday, right? Uh, all kinds of cool stuff. So that's how you create a clock. That's how you pause things and do things on timers. Really cool. And, and spend a minute just kind of going through here and reading all these things. You could have the abbreviated month name instead of the full month name, uh, or you could have the full month name, all right? And just try all of these and see what they all do, right? You might be surprised by a couple of them. Day of the year, month as a decimal number, minute as a decimal number. Well, we already did that one. Uh, what else? Week number, right? All kinds of cool stuff. And that is the uh, STRF time. Now there's a bunch of different times. You can do time sleep, time process. So maybe spend a minute just reading this whole page if you're interested in this. All kinds of cool stuff in here. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out my website, codeme.com, where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com, and we'll see you in the next video.